get our meeting started, please. Okay, we need to move on with our items, please. Thank you. Next item on our agenda. We've really got to move it along. Next on our agenda, we had a request from the New Silver Beach concerning their betterments. And there are five different uh, requests that they gave to us. I'll just remind you that the request had to do with uh, using the 0% as a little, sewer, the, uh, little pond water sewers project in the 30 year payback period. Uh, it's been very clear from our town council that we do not have that option, that we have to, that the particular uh, legislation had to do with the Little Pond Sewer Project and that we could not then retroactively apply it to those others. Um, that uh, we do appreciate the requests, but we really do not have the ability to do so. Uh, we also do not have any hookups at this point available in the future to be added to that, nor could we, if we did get them, could we earmark those funds to specifically go um, to New Silver Beach that we're not given that latitude uh, by the finance director and by uh, state statute. And so while I do appreciate the request, I just don't, I personally don't feel there's any place we can go with any of these requests. Any other comment from the board? Well, I mean, mm -hmm. I think town council has laid it out pretty clear what our options are under general laws. Right. And under the general laws, um, we have no option. The, um, with the, with the betterment that was um, uh, voted by this board on the, on the um, Little Pond project is, as you said, it's not retroactive. You can't go back in time. I think the other thing that's important to understand, too, that when the, when the betterments are set and when the uh, financial uh, plan is established by the finance director and put into place, those financial commitments are made with, a, with the lender that the town borrowed the money from. And those commitments are, are legal obligations on the part of the town to actually make those payments as they were scheduled according to the initial betterment. And so if we were to reduce, if we even had the power to reduce the betterment, those, those monies would still have to be paid to the lender. That would not change our obligation uh, to the, the lenders that we borrowed the money from to pay for the project in the first place. So what would happen is we would, if we, and if we were, and we're not, but suppose we could, we would have to go back to town meeting and ask town meeting if they would uh, allow the town to increase the tax rate on all the taxpayers of the town to pay the difference of the reduced betterment because the financial obligation to the borrowers is still there. And it's a, it's a 20 year obligation. It's not like you can go out and refinance your house because the interest rates are lower. So now you can go out and get a, get a loan at a lower rate. When the town commits to bonding through um, betterments, we can't go out and change that. We can't say, guess what, the rates are now lower. We want to provide lower rates to the people. You can't do that under the Mass General Law. So you just can't do it. So we would end up having to ask town meeting to have all the taxpayers supplement the difference in those betterments. So either way, it's just something we can't do. Okay. Any other so. comments from the board? Uh, yeah, yeah I, I did inquire. <laughs> there, I mean, there is one way, I believe, that you can relieve yourselves from the interest, the, the debt service. Uh, it's my understanding that this is like a conventional mortgage. And I've always tried to pay ahead on my mortgages, so I didn't have to carry as much debt service. And that's one way you can do, is just pay off the betterment. And then you won't be paying the interest on that loan, essentially. I, you know, it's something that not everybody can do, but it is a way of avoiding to have that, to pay that 2.5% debt service charge uh, on top of the betterment charge itself. So, and of course, that's what happens when a, 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 a property is sold. The betterment is paid off, and then uh, the future owner doesn't have to pay that anymore. But 
that's the only option I was able to identify for any of you property owners. Um, so we don't have any motion to take. We've heard the presentation. We took it under advisement. Is there something new you want to add? Yeah, well, we're not going to be making any other decision. We've, we've heard the proposal. You've already made your decision. Yeah. I'd just like to make a comment. Okay. My name is Bill Dinan. I'm from Precinct 5, newly elected town meeting member. I've spoken to uh, one of the sponsors of this bill that sponsored this bill at Chapter 49 for the town of Falmouth, uh, Representative Rivera, and he told me the only way this could be changed or added to is by the Board of Selectmen control this. And that's the same way this bill came about. If uh, you filing a bill, we'll go to town meeting, we'll vote on it, and he'll file it again. So there is a process that could be done here. There is a process. In addition, the wording on this, I question the wording on this, not a lawyer, but it says and or unpaid balances for assessments mm -hmm. for any betterment. So I question that too. Now we yeah. can go to town meeting in April and do this whole drill all over again. We'll do it again if we have to. But you have the power as the Board of Selectmen to refile this thing. We're looking to go forward, not backwards. Well, the only way we could do it would be at the town, and we would have to take it to town meeting to yes. refile it. And act of legislation. I will petition for town meeting. Right. At this point, the town meeting warrant for November is set oh, already. I know that. So, I know that. So but I'm saying that you have between now and then that you have a chance to look at this and make that decision. There is a way out of this you can do this. Okay. It's not fair that you charge 200 homes in New Silver Beach an interest on an interest free Massachusetts Clean Water Trust, which is 0% loan for the money for both projects, and we paid 2.5% and, and they paid zero. I certainly consider that argument. I, it's and a I understand different board that. to start this. I understand I, that. I understand exactly what you're saying. Because okay. there's going to be other projects after this one that's going to be in the same predicament we're in right now. I got you. Okay. okay. So I appreciate you reviewing this, but uh, there's got to be more to be done before this is resolved. Okay. And uh, we will bring it to the town floor in okay. April if we have to. We'll collect the signatures, what we have to do. We'll do a presentation. We'll get additional legal opinions. Uh, I'd like to talk to state reps again and talk to everyone that filed this bill to see the interpretation as the way it should have, uh, should have been interpreted for other projects in the town, other betterment projects. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Can I just ask one question? Yeah. You have to cover the microphone. <coughs> and I'm not going to stir the pot. Stir the pot. Greg Rookie at 10 Hunt Street. Um, I just have a question relative to the, yeah, I understand the capital discussion that you had and the, you know, associated with the bond. But what about the expense component of it, you know, for uh, utilization um, cost? I mean, that's not part of the, uh, part of the, uh, the capital um, component that's there. So we have a utilization fee that is significant every, you know, every month or every year. Can we address the cost differential, you know, associated with the different projects through a utilization fee that's a little bit different? You mean the you sewer fees? Yeah. yeah. They're different oh, for you than other fees. than other yeah, places in town. Well, they may not be different, but the overall project cost, the cost to me of the sewer rate is different than it is yeah, for somebody yeah, else in this new project, right? And its components are the capital cost, the hookup cost, and the utilization cost. So my water, you know, my, my sewer cost is a component of the capital side that I'm paying back on the loan and uh, usage fees. So can we have you know, different usage fees associated with the projects? Uh, I thought the usage fee is actually co is a charge for the cost of treating Every gallon that comes in, I right. get charged for right. the discharge. Which is true right. for everyone who's sewered, no matter where they are. Exactly. And that's constant but, but throughout the town. That, that component could be used to normalize the cost of residents across the town. In, in the overall cost of sewage. I can't imagine trying to do that calculation to figure out which, each house you're going to charge a Not different. Not each house. I'm just saying that you, 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 you know, each house gets charged different anyhow, you know, depending upon the usage. So it's based but on volume. If, rate, but if you had a different volume, rate for volume? No, no, rate per, per project. So if we, in the Silver Beach project, had one rate, another project had another rate, but the normalization over a 30 year period was the same. You say make an art, I, give them I, an I, artificial I, discount mm -hmm. to adjust right. for other things. I can't imagine, and I'm pretty good at math, trying to come up with that calculation mm -hmm. for it. Creative, but, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's being done now. I mean, you, you know, we have, you know, it's a different cost per project. 
based on the numbers that are set for the uh, for the overall usage. Okay, but we have not looked into the tra changing the sewer rate, so that is something that we can set that we can look into. It is something that is not. So, I mean, again, I, you know, okay. just a consideration. That, you know, I, I, don't, I wouldn't feel comfortable really having that discussion at this point because there's a lot more information you have to get to consider that point of view. Interesting idea. Yeah. I'm Susan Flynn and I live at 5 Hunt Street. Um, the suggestion that Mr. Patterson made uh, is the town actually set up to do that? If I throw an extra $500 toward my betterment beyond what is on my tax bill, they're going to apply that appropriately so that next, you know, the next billing I have less interest and so forth. The question is, is the town actually set up to do what you suggested? I know they are in bulk. I'm not sure if they yeah. are in... I know I can pay it off. Right. And they won't mess that up. Right. Okay. Yeah, but I, I'm not, yeah. you suggested... I, I hear you, and I can't answer your question. You can I'm call sorry. the office during... Yeah. You know, I'm during sure this week. question Jennifer can answer very, very quickly for the you. The finance director, they could answer that. Okay. The other point I would like to make is I do think that, uh, in general, I've been following the Little Pond project, and I think the town of Falmouth has done an excellent job in terms of listening to their residents and trying to make sure that their burden from their betterment does not crush them and cause them to have to sell their homes and move out. It is true, a lot of homes in Silver Beach went up for sale as soon as the betterment bill started hitting. It did force people out of our community. Uh, however, even though I'm outside of the flood zone and still subject to a sewer betterment, I think it's the right thing to do for the beach and for uh, our environment. I think it's unfortunate that the system was uh, perhaps not designed properly to make it cost affordable. The biggest problem here, besides the interest, is the fact that there's only 200 homes carrying the burden of the whole district. So our total dollar per household, not counting the interest, is close to double what the Little Pond's getting. Uh, and if the town is going to do sewering piecemeal, community by community by community, next time it will be the New South Beach people and the Little Pond people mm -hmm. protesting and questioning the deal that whoever is next gets. And I really think that the town needs to consider how to affect parity across everyone. Because sooner or later, maybe not in my lifetime, there will be public sewer throughout this town. That's right. Thank you. All right, next item is hearing on the Senior Center site feasibility. Uh, this will be a presentation, discussion. We're not expecting to have a vote on site preference tonight. But Joel does have a two hour drive after he's done talking to us. Good evening, Joel. Thank you for coming back and waiting. Okay, well, we're at the end of phase two in our presentation. After the presentation tonight, we'll wrap this up into a finished feasibility study and present it to the town manager's office. Um, phase two, is it possible to just get, yeah, thank you. Okay, so, I just want to set the tone for what we're doing. A phase, feasibility study for site selection is really to determine the best site for the senior center. There's a few things that you have to back up and look at before we get there. And one is exactly how big that building is so that we can test the site to make sure the building can fit on it. So we did some analysis of peer facilities, other towns, met with the Council on Aging and came up with a working program for the center. So I'd emphasize as you get to the next phase of the design, you'll probably refine this program, but it's a starting point to use to realistically assess your sites. 
it comes up with a 15,000 square foot of net usable space. So that's your rooms like this, 15,000 square feet. A total of 20,000 square foot building when you add things like hallways and restrooms to that. Does that mean you're going to build off 20,000 square feet or 15,000 usable at once? Maybe, maybe not. That's a decision to be made. But we didn't want to size the sites on the small side. We wanted to be able to accommodate the long-term size of the building. What, what is that size? Well, City Town Hall is a 20,000 square foot building, primarily on one floor, but some lower level and some upper level space. The school administration building, for a point of reference, is a, a 14,000 square foot building. The library is much larger at 37,000. So I'm just trying to put 20,000 square feet into the range. This is a 20,000 square foot Senior Center in Franklin, 90% is on one level. It's a large multi-purpose room there. This is the same size, 20,000 square foot room, uh, Senior Center in Needham on two stories. So just, again, the, the options of things people have asked about as we're looking at these sites, can it handle a one-story building? Can it handle a two-story building? Do you really want a one-story building versus a more compact two-story element? And I, I don't think that the plans are important, although as the final study gets handed out and people look at it for the next six months, it's helpful to understand how does a multi-purpose room sort of activate the site that you're looking at and how you might see the site growing from the inside to the outside and other amenities that um, are helpful to, when you look at a site to sort of see how the, begin, the building begins to work. So you'll see these sort of space use diagrams put onto the site plans, which doesn't mean that we have a final design. But it's also intended to help <coughs> folks in the next months before you get to town meeting think about the size of the site and the building because when you get to a site that's some folks want a one-story building, it gets to be a rather enormous footprint. And so the purpose of going through this exercise has been to help folks in the public sessions understand that if a particular site is dependent on a two-story building, that's not necessarily a negative aspect of that site. So with that said, the first site that we looked at um, actually generated in your deliberations this summer two sites. The high school is in the middle of a, of a rather about 80 acres of land. There was one site called Brick Kiln Road that fronts on Brick Kiln <coughs> and another site we called the Gifford Street Extension site that is up here by the field hockey and lacrosse field tennis courts off of Gifford Street Extension. Um, interesting, you know, I mean, for those in Falmouth know, but this continues on and connects into downtown about a five minute, six minute travel. So the first site we'll look at is Gifford Street Extension. You have the high school, the field house, the track, the parking lots. This is the student parking lot, the tennis courts, and the site there is at the very end of, this, of the property. This is Old Campus Road, Gifford Street Extension, and the point of using that site was that's a cleared site. It happened to be uh, a, a donated site contributed to the, the school and what we would be looking for is to where we could replicate that site elsewhere but the attraction of using that was a building in that location is pretty much free of the activity at the school so it could have its own entry and access point you can see those things a little bit better on this drawing so here you have the student parking lot the tennis courts Gifford Street extension and there's a road in, a way out, parking for 100 cars, maybe a few more than you need, but there's no, the overflow parking um, really is bisected, so we want to make sure that at least at this phase we show that the site can handle more cars than you may think you need in phase one. And then you can see the, this is, happens to be the two-story footprint, and what's sort of particularly nice about this site is it has some breathing room around it and you can see areas for outdoor events, 
croquet, bocce, outdoor gardens, outdoor patios, other things, and, and the opportunity to possibly let the building uh, lead into paths that work through some of the undisturbed land here that's at the north of the school that could expand the programming and the use of the uh, senior center. So you have one option. Now I mentioned these aren't designs. As you go to the next phase, the project will develop. What these are really to do is to test the site and what that particular building was here with the parking lot in front of it, uh, access road off there. The site could clearly be used where the building fronts onto Gifford Street extension, has a front door onto the street, parking lot on the rear. The purpose of the drawing is to show that the site's very usable and to suggest what opportunities are there and how the site gets developed is really part of the next phase design. As I mentioned, when you put a site on this field, you displace an a, a very nice field. It hap happens to be two fields. Um, they're able to rotate spring and fall. So fall plays on this half, spring plays on this half, and that way you can keep the grass turf in really good condition. So if you were to put a senior center on that field, the issue would be, what do you do to replace that field? Our civil engineers, uh, our architects, and the athletic director for the school walked this entire site and actually was able to find a location <coughs> here where there's a, a level plateau that's large enough that could be developed and from the field house is within the sort of same walking vicinity that your existing fields are. In fact, it's a little bit closer and it's a little bit more direct from the back door. You can get to it easily, so it actually has some nice features to it. What this shows is a topo topographic map of the high school. You can see the high school here. Each one of these is, is a foot of, in this case, they're drops. These are hollows in the site. And you can see right here, there's a, the lines are much further apart. You can actually come from the, the road, this little back parking lot. It's flat along here, and it leads to a flat area there. You can get almost the full double field, a little bit of fill on this side. Another opportunity to consider would be uh, if you did a single field in synthetic turf, um, you wouldn't have to rotate the fields, and you could have less clearing and a different kind of opportunity. So it just shows the double field, single field, and how that can fit within the contours of the site. So the conclusion was that Gifford Street Extension was a doable, usable site. And we found an opportunity to replace the field. Our cost estimators estimated that cost into the project so that you know the total burden that this project would have uh, as a cost. One of the options that was discounted, but I think one, uh, it sort of was raised vocally in one of the public sessions was to put the building where the existing tennis courts are because then you don't have to take a field out of service. When you, when you rebuild a field, it's really a two-year process because you have to plant the seeds, you have to let it grow for a full year before you can use it. If you put the building on the tennis court site, uh, you don't have that delay. Plus, it turns out that there's quite a few spaces. There's over 100 spaces in this front lot that are underutilized on a daily basis. So there was a question of could you economize on the site? And the answer is yes, but the traffic report for this particular site came out very negative in that as seniors and students might leave at about the same time, in the two to three o'clock range in the afternoon, the confluence of traffic and parents who park on Gifford Street and then come in and pick up their kids when they do the kids pick up independent of the buses that pick up kids. There's a lot of traffic going on in this particular lot. And during fall and spring sports seasons, you have the sports team walking up 
to use the fields, the potentially the tennis players coming up. There's a lot of activity and it puts the, the traffic all in the midst of that activity, whereas the other site that used the field came out and had their traffic and parking completely separate. The only negative aspect of this site uh, that was from a data point um, was that the curvature in the road makes this particular site a little more difficult to exit. Your, the gap between cars is a little bit shorter than the traffic engineers would like because as the road curves, you lose sight of the car that's coming sort of from beyond the curve. And it's a minor issue, but it is uh, one issue that affects this site that doesn't affect the other sites. The second site at the high school was to use uh, the Brick Kiln Road site. This happens to be an existing soccer field. So that replacement field that we found over in this area is used not only to replace this field over here, but the field that would be displaced by this development would also be replicated there. So you end up being neutral in terms of your field count. Um, Brick Hill Road has the benefit of a traffic signal here, which does a lot in terms of traffic calming on Brick Kiln Road and where you, one might think that it could be a little more difficult to enter and exit off of Brick Kiln, the traffic signal uh, causes a stop in the traffic direction, actually in both directions, and we put an entry at this point where there is an existing service entry, and the advantage of that is it's quite far from the intersection, so any traffic backing up at the intersection isn't going to back up this entry road and um, it's located sort of proximate to this intersection, which is a nice traffic uh, point. So you come in, and you can see a little bit better here. You come into the site, park on the soccer field. Again, there's about 100 spaces. There's an overflow existing lot for another 50 spaces. So that, that's a real nice feature that if there's a event where uh, they may be a special speaker using the 3,000 square foot multi-purpose room. Folks don't have to park along the street. There'll be more than adequate parking here. Um, you do have a little bit of an issue with the girls' softball field. So the service side of the building is put here where you don't need windows. The more active side of the building is here that can give an elevation to the street. And just like the other design, this shows that the building can fit on this site. The building can also turn in front on the road, so the front facade or the back facade, however you might like to position it, could front onto brick kiln, and then the parking would work on the back. So again, these look like they're done. They're really rendered so that people can begin to imagine what it's like to get dropped off at a senior center, have a covered drop-off point, walk in, have a lobby, look out through the lobby to the outside, and begin to en envision how these sites might be over the next couple of months. And this would not have the option of the walking trails as easily as the That's Kipper Street extension. Right? So there are a couple of assumptions we've made. Um, that I think are valid to put on the table that um, just because the building's at the school site doesn't mean that the school's open to the seniors during the day. It's my understanding that the <coughs> school facilities would be for the students during the day and if, if anything were available it would be at the end of session or in the evenings. Um, two is... And when you're talking about facilities, it's not only the buildings but it's also uh, you know, the, the track, the fields, the tennis courts. Correct. Thank you. Yeah. If we replace a field, the concept was the senior center, that, that would have to be replaced before the senior center could start construction so that this, the school department, the ad, athletic administration would not be without a field for one season. Um, and then just something to think about, the natural turf field takes a year to germinate, so um, 
one thing that we looked at, and um, you know, you could consider a synthetic turf field and, and avoid that one year germination period. And the thing to think about in that is, is that the escalation in construction is quite high at the moment. So if you can not delay a project by a year, you actually save, can possibly save some money making the difference between natural turf and synthetic turf less of an issue, but I think that's, again, an issue for down the road. The third site we looked at was the school administration building and tea ticket. So it's a split level building. Uh, you, you sort of enter at the back or the front, halfway between the, what we call the lower level and the upper level for first floor, second floor. As I mentioned, it's a 14,000 square foot footprint building. Um, you know, it's a senior center feasibility study, but we actually had to get sort of deep into the school administration use of this particular project. The um, acting uh, superintendent gave us a roster of positions and types of offices they need needed. We went through the building and we inventoried the spaces in the building. You can see it, it, it's quite heavily used. Um, this is the school committee meeting room. That's an interesting room because um, in some of the scenarios, if a senior center is sort of co-located with the school administration, that, that room could be uh, part of the multi-purpose space for the, the senior center since it's used at night. We inventoried copies, file rooms, and we came up with, I meant to organize this a little differently, we came up with a working program of spaces and how much space the school administration needed. Okay, let me try to explain this. <laughs> the school building was designed as a school and as such, the corridors are quite wide because in the, in, when it was a school building, kids exited out of the classrooms all at once and you had to make your hallways wide enough for that surge of students. Plus you had to have corridor, stairs that were wide enough for the students. There's a main entry in. There used to be an exit out the back which has been taken out of the scheme. But what you can see from this drawing is that the, the building's relatively inefficient in terms of its usable space versus its circulation space. There's quite a large amount of circulation space. The other thing about the building is, is as I mentioned, is that the, the parking lot and the entry level is at grade. So this red line is at grade, and that's sort of halfway between the lower level or the first floor and the second floor. So as you park and come into the building, you're neither at the lower level nor the higher level. And as you co-locate a building next to this as one of the options, it really wants to be at grade because the whole point of a senior center is to make it accessible to those who may have physical disabilities and you want to get in and out of it easily. So a senior center would be at grade and then you would have to mitigate in some manner these, if you shared space, these two floors. So what I'm trying to get at is you either have three floors to deal with um, as you co-locate with that particular building. And last, as I mentioned, it, it, the senior center study ended up looking deeply at the school administration building. We took that program, we took our site visits with the school department. Um, Patrick was really helpful in getting us access to each room. And we laid out the senior center, the school administration program as ideally as we could assuming that they didn't have to use some of the constraints that they have today. And what you find is that the, the gross area of the building is actually 14,300 square feet. The building really only has a usable area of 8,900 square feet when you take out all the corridors. You don't need two stairs. The stairs are enormous. So the school administration used area in this layout is 8,200 square feet, leaving an unused area of 700 square feet. So it, now, so in the program as it exists today, it's, it's showing that not only in the mathematical 
space needs analysis, but also in the graphical laying out of rooms in the building, you don't generate a huge surplus of space. The only way that you could generate some additional space is on the existing lower level of the building is the Coalition for Children, which is a, a children's and parenting program that exists on the lower level and currently occupies this wing of the building. And if that could be located elsewhere, you could conceivably get one quarter of the building available for excess space. So what, that's a little bit complicated. Let me get back to the, to the point. If the school administration stayed in this building and you were to relocate the Coalition for Children, you could put an addition onto the building that would house most of the senior programs and you could use the two or three classrooms in the lower level as activity spaces for the senior center. So you, you could reduce the new footprint by 2,500 square feet. But again, that footprint is either on the lower level or the upper level of the school administration building. And if this is a two-story building now, you end up sort of on three different levels. The building today, I don't have the picture here. The building today is not accessible. Um, there's a ramp that brings you in from the parking lot and takes you down to the lower level. And there's another ramp that takes you from the parking lot to the upper level. If you're on the lower level and you want to get to the upper level and you're physically disabled, you have to take the ramp up, go outside, around the corner, back up this ramp, and then you end up on the second floor. Once you combine the buildings, the code requires us to make this building accessible because we're adding more than 30%. We're changing the valuation of this property and uh, a number of code issues come into effect. So in order to use this 2,500 square foot of space, you need to build a 1,500 square foot little addition that has another vertical lift that would allow this building to be physically accessible to those who are disabled. Um, so you're, you're, one of the point is it's not a huge net benefit gain to co mingle the two buildings. What we ended up saying was you could just as easily leave the school administration there and let them deal with their issues and you can still get either a one or a two-story freestanding senior center on this site and the only extra burden that this senior center incurs then is the replacement of the softball baseball field that's at this location that's displaced by the new parking lot that would serve seniors and schools. So it's, it's 1045. I don't think I explained that all that well. So let me try it again. Could I, just, this, yeah. could I just ask you how many square feet in the new addition? What did you say there? And in the new part that would be built behind yeah. the current administrate, right there. Right. How many square feet? That's drawn as twenty thousand square feet, which okay. is, is the, so. It's to, the point of which is to prove that the site can handle the the twenty thousand square correct. feet. Yeah. Okay. But the addition would be less. The addition would actually be about 19,000 because you don't get a huge, well, you get 2,500 square foot of space in here. You need the 1,500. So better. there's another option that's a little goofy, but it is an option to consider, and it could be a viable one. The school administration's in this building, and you can't, you can't renovate around them. So one other alternative to consider, which, which I, I don't think is a, a great one, but it's out there. You could build a new building for the school administration. These folks would go out. When this building is done, they occupy the new building. 
that empties up this building and you renovate, then you have an opportunity to renovate the school administration building while it's empty. And I seem to have lost a slide. I, what I, I had a slide in here that there's the school administration building, in addition to the handicapped access, it's not sprinkled. Once you do this addition, you have to add sprinklers to it. The life safety system, the alarms, and that would need to be upgraded. The impact of adding an addition onto this, which I don't think is a bad thing, it's good to upgrade buildings from a code perspective, would be that this building incurs a larger upgrade uh, to it, and that cost needs to be factored into the estimates. I know there's a lot of information here, so let me try to... This is a plan that just takes the, the spaces that the senior center needs and puts them in the school administration building. We even went so far as to take out one of the, super, the extra stairs that's at the front of the building to make it as efficient as possible. But you still have a relatively inefficient building with stairs, the main entry that's more symbolical historical, you end up with an 8,500 square foot amount of space that's in that 20,000 square foot senior center space allotment that doesn't fit into this building. So what this means is that if you really want to move the, the seniors into this building, put the school administration in the back. The school administration building in the back would need an additional 8,500 square feet to house senior programs that wouldn't fit into this building. And in closing on this issue, what, I, what we've looked at in our cost estimates is that buildings are difficult to get approved. They should really be looked at, in my opinion, at a 50-year life cycle. That I don't think you want to go in and, and do a renovation that in 10 years, 15 years, falls flat. We would look at this, if we did this, to bring it up to a life cycle that a generation doesn't have to refund a building to make it a usable project. Okay, the traffic analysis, I think, was really quite nicely done, um, especially since they couldn't really do anything until kids got back in school and the school traffic came back and they could evaluate this. The sites all actually come out acceptable. The cliff notes are the gap study is quite good on all of the sites. The gaps are the distance between cars that, that come uh, down the road and does it give you enough time in between cars to make a turn. High school is clearly better than the the school administration site. We do improve the school administration site by moving the entry from there and there all the way to this end so that it's really much more remote from the intersection and any backup traffic and accelerating traffic is out of the way. Plus, at this point, you have a good straight line vision as you go into the site up and down T-Ticket Highway. Um, Both, all the sites came out as safe. Um, there were a few more accidents on this site recorded in the last three years than at the high school site, but the proportion of accidents to traffic was neutral between the two sites. In other words, there are a lot more, there's a lot more traffic here, so one would expect there to be a higher incidence of traffic accidents, but the number of accidents per cars was relatively neutral. Um, the level of service is, is good at all the sites. Um, none of the sites, all the sites were C and above, which is good. And then um, the nearby accommodations refers to public transportation, the ability to walk, the ability to bike. Uh, so the, the traffic engineer pointed out that there are some opportunities here that don't lend themselves to the site that's a little bit more remote from neighborhood traffic, from a pedestrian circulation system, and from a downtown 
public transportation that could easily come up to this site. All right, so we did some cost estimates, and the point of this slide is that if people want to know what the construction cost is, but when you go to town meeting, you have to vote for total cost, which is designer's fees, legal fees, all sorts of other costs, furniture, fixtures, and equipment. Um, so we like to express both of them, because some people focus on the construction number in, the, in, in audiences, but we have to add all these other costs. So we did a worksheet to consider each of the three sites from a total project cost and came up with some ranges. The freestanding building at the school administration site actually, uh, they're all pretty close, but it's, it's in the 6.8 to 7.5 range for a construction cost. The bonding range would be eight, let's call it nine million. It's a little bit more at the high school site because the cost to replace this field is more expensive than the cost to replace that field. And that explains the $200,000 difference. The high range is, the gap here is bigger because we actually don't know where you might replace the field for the school administration site, whereas we think we know at least a good site option here. The Brick Kiln Road site at the school is just a little bit more expensive and only because the pump station for the sewage system is located up by the tennis courts. So it's an additional $200,000 to pipe and pump from the Brick Kiln Road up to the tennis court where there's a sewage ejector pump that pushes it to their sewage facility. I think for talk's sake, these are sort of pretty close to each other in terms of their cost. The one that gets a little bit more expensive is the addition to the school administration because as I pointed out, that triggers an interior renovation of the administration building in addition to the added on structure that you would do either for the senior center or the school administration to make this option work. So that adds about 1.5 million, the interior renovation a 14,000 square foot building is about $100 a square foot and um, ended up being on the, the highest side. So I apologize, I didn't, uh, I forgot where this was, but uh, why is the renovation more expensive? Well, the ceilings in the school administration building are antiquated. Those are 1980 ceilings, 1980 lights. There might be energy programs to replace the lights, but there's a cost there. Um, when they renovated the school, they took out the rear stair, but now you have a dead end corridor, it exceeds the code requirement, so a new stair would have to be put in that back section. You can see there's no sprinklers, there's a lot of sort of older trim that if you, it's cute and it's quaint, but if you're probably designing a senior center for the next 50 years, you, you'd probably wanna maybe keep some of the beautiful molding, but get rid of some of the molding that's not so attractive. And then the site, uh, hasn't been attacked for uh, a number of years. So the, the wheel stops are old, the black top is old. There's no drainage system, it's just sheet drain. So it, it doesn't even comply with uh, close to the Stormwater Protection Act that is part and part of not only Falmouth, but the entire Commonwealth, where you don't want this water to drain down to your lower elevation neighbors. The last part of the study is, uh, okay, you build a building that's a one-time cost, and now you have to operate a larger uh, senior center. Ballard King is a, a um, company that does operations for senior centers and community centers, and they did an evaluation of your existing costs, your additional costs, and um, I have to admit that some of these slides are meant to be a little bit difficult to read because the detail is there, but what we're really trying to get to is the, the big picture of it and not quibble about the, the $1,500 cost here and there. Your, your current expenses, salaries, and total cost are here. That's about a 5,000 square foot program. The new building would be 20,000 square feet, so it's safe to assume that your expenses to operate 
not only in salaries, but in heating, cooling, postage, advertisement, cleaning, cleaning supplies, food supplies. You have more of everything going on. So uh, this is the additional cost to what's currently funded, and that's the total cost. Um, but that's not, this is the new cost. And again, this is a peer review uh, without saying now what could we do to lower this cost. We haven't tried to artificially bring this down. We've tried to keep this at a peer level so that um, folks aren't surprised uh, on the negative side. If there's a surprise, it would be on the positive side that this number could come down with some creative uh, looking at staffing. Thank you. I've just a technical question. Did each of the options that you show for these various sites in, in, include um, or um, assume that the senior center would be 20,000 square feet in each configuration? Y yes. Okay. Yeah. But we want it, everyone is equal in its amenities and its outdoor space. The cost estimates are completely neutral. And um, so that the, really the intent is, is to be able to isolate the site, which is the best one. Thank you. Any other questions for Joel? Yeah. Jim, did you want to say anything? Uh, maybe one or two of us. You guys aren't going to get a fight with each other, though, are you? Mm -hmm. up that Good luck with that. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jim Vieira. I'm the chairman of the Council on Aging and also the, the, the site group. And uh, first of all, I, I'd really like to thank Joel because I think he's done an amazing job. And I think that uh, I personally have been delighted with the results. And I think our, our site group uh, also. Um, we, uh, you know, I understand you've got a really difficult decision to make. And uh, we have, uh, on our site feasibility group, we're going to be meeting one more time to, uh, we saw a draft of this presentation a week or two ago, and some of us are here tonight to see this final one. They're essentially the same. And um, so we're going to be meeting again uh, to discuss it and come up with a final recommendation. And, you know, we'd like to do that uh, fairly quickly um, so that we can communicate that to you via email or, or letter or whatever. So I can't say to you tonight, you know, this is out of those options, this is the one that, that we're recommending because we haven't met to actually do that. Um, so anything I would say tonight would just be my personal opinion. So um, if at some point uh, we would have an idea of when you're thinking about voting, then I can make sure that I get my committee to meet again and we can discuss it and we could make our final recommendation. So, um, so that, that's what I'd like to, to throw out there. But I know that, uh, that maybe one or two of my compatriots might like to speak, if that's okay with you. Sure. <coughs> Thank you, Brenda Swain, part of the Council on Aging. Uh, I just wanted to also thank Joel because he stayed a long time tonight and has been really uh, responsive to all of the community forums and all of the information that people have been giving him all along. Um, and I know that the working group and the Council on Aging uh, have been very pleased with his work. There's a lot for you to consider, but I also think that you've heard a lot throughout the last several months, over a year, from many, many people. So this is sort of a culmination of their feedback to you through this wonderful presentation. I'd just like to make one point uh, that I think I have some specific uh, experience with, and that is moving from a small building when the service center was in a teeny little space um, to a 10,000 square foot building, and I was the only staff person. Um, it took six years before we hired someone else. We have myself who's full-time and three part-time people. 450 volunteers, 15 key volunteers who run some exceptional programs. I think Falmouth is a community where people who retire come here because they want to be of service. 
and they are capable of helping staff people to run amazing programs. So I, I understand that some of what Joel presented was peer review and what other programs are doing, but Falmouth isn't like other communities, and I think you also realize that. So I don't want you to be scared by those figures, because I think that there's some unique and creative ways that we can work on that. And as part of the Council on Aging, working with Jill, I think that we could be very creative about that. Thank you. Pat? Well, I was just going to say, I mean, I, I just really like this presentation. I found it very, very helpful and informative. I think at some point it would be helpful to um, have some idea of the types of programs. I mean, I know, kind of know what you do now, but the kind of programming that you expect to have in a, in a new facility. Certainly some similar to what you do now, but with a much larger uh, facility, probably more and different programs. Just nothing, you know, too specific, but just some general ideas of how the building would be utilized. Not, not, not tonight. No, I don't need it tonight. Another night. But just think about that before we, before we make our vote. I think it would be helpful for us to have you maybe come back and give us those ideas of, of your programming. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. And certainly at the April Town meeting when we're going to be asking for right, money. Exactly. Would be yeah, the right, exactly. Yeah, that we have to... a really good idea of how, the, how, how everything is going to function in the building. Not everything. Yeah, I'm sure. You know. I don't doubt that for a minute. <laughs> Any other questions from the board? Mm -mm. Uh, on the timetable yeah. Jim's asked for, we do have a meeting next Monday, but then we don't meet again until the you know the half hour meeting before town meeting. Um, I'd be surprised if we'd be ready to, or for you to have your meeting and for us to be voting next Monday night. Would that be doable or not? It, it works for us because we can post for later this week, but, you know, that, that I think we should plan for Monday. For a vote on Monday night? Mm-hmm. Because I was really hoping to get some input from other people, you know, yeah. come emails and give it to them. I would be ready to vote Monday. This coming Monday night? Right, that's when. You have a, you're, okay, all right. I, I definitely would be ready I'd, by Monday night. I'd really like to hear about the program. That would really well, help I read me. their their senior news tells you everything that goes on. Don't you get the senior news? Which is interesting. Yeah. Future programming. Yeah. No, I'm at future programming. This is a big building. This is yeah. twenty thousand square feet. It, it is a big building. Um, and I look at what we do right now and how many few times we get to offer specific programs. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be able to offer some of the existing programs multiple times, not once a month or once a week. We also want to elaborate on a lot of the educational opportunities, uh, collaborating with lifelong learning and with the college. Um, we get to um, also expand upon the health and wellness components of things to make sure that we are offering all of, whether it's educational, health and wellness, wellness, nutritional programs that are offered at different times appropriate for the, each of the generations. If you're looking at the baby boomer generation, we talk about the hours that they would want to be coming to a center um, after hours. So, you know, it's looking at the working hours for a structure of the week. So there's a whole wealth of information. Mm -hmm. We work on evidence-based programming um, through our coast directors. Um, they're all through grant-sponsored V&A programs. So it's a, it's a variety of program that we're going to do. Um, is there anything specific you're thinking? Are you going to have a gym? Yes. Because I go to the Harwich Community Center occasionally for meetings. I don't go there to use the gym. But every time I go there, that gym is 100% occupied every yeah. hour of the day. The wellness, health and wellness component um, across all ages when we did the needs assessment, that became one of the number one um, concerns of people. Um, and focus. So having a fitness center as in addition to a wellness room for particular programs such as yoga or meditation or chair yoga, um, Zumba's line dancing, all of that type of thing we will do. We want to get into fall prevention programs. So you do are going to have your fitness programs, you'll have your fitness center, but I also want to get into the educational component of things <coughs> and nutritional education as well. And of course, technology, and never mind our cafe models. 
about the socialization for people to come in, drop in, see what's going on, and get engaged about what we do. Could mm -hmm. so. you see a polling place or voting place being able to be used in this building? I do. I do. I also want to build on educational of uh, the inter intergenerational opportunities. Um, and if we can do it during the day or even some evenings, if we start to open during some evenings, which is a goal, uh, even at the current center, I'd like to start offering one evening a week, um, perhaps like on a Thursday night, to start to draw in some of the baby boomers still working. Uh, but intergenerational opportunities is definitely something we will be building on. Would you think about calling it a community center instead of a senior center? No. I, from, from day one, I said we need to take out the word senior. And I think okay. we need to think about what we want to call this um, because it is, it's going to be an active center. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I don't, I've always wanted to change the perception of seniors. We've talked about rebranding and how to go about doing that through this process as we select a site. So absolutely changing the name. Just take the word senior out yeah. and call mm -hmm. it anything yeah. but the senior mm -hmm. center. Absolutely. Nobody wants to be called a senior. No, no, it's going to be an active center for this community. But I think that's something that people need to have input on instead of just us picking a random name. Right. I'd like to have a competition of some sort to mm -hmm. what do we want to call this. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I do, would like to give Jim an idea of whether we're going to try to do this on Monday or not. Okay, uh, I'll just give my reasons. I think we have talked about this and talked about this and met. I can't tell you the number of meetings that I've gone to on this subject. And I, I understand when you say, what are you going to have? But our vote is a site. It's the site. So whatever is going to go into the design will come later for whatever programs are going so to be we're there. Just voting so we're just strategy. voting on a site, and we've Where got. Where have I been? How come I didn't know? <laughs> and um, so whatever goes into the site. So we have two at the high school, and then we have the one at administration, and either that building or an add-on or something of that type. And I think each one of them have a reason why I would say that's not bad. That's okay. And then there's detriments to all three that I see. So in that, because I feel as if I've been going to meetings for 18 months now, and to say let's wait another month, I think it's time to vote. It's up to you guys. I mean, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm ready for Monday. I, I think so. I feel a little rushed on this, but one reason I'd like to do it is then uh, Jim and I have talked and uh, with the school committee we could make a report among the three of us at town meeting that this is the site that we have chosen and we're moving forward and <coughs> report where we're going with mm -hmm. this. And yeah, I yep. think the timing for that I would think, be, I we're think not asking, I, we've talked enough. Because we wouldn't be asking for any money for it at November town meeting, but we'd say mm -hmm. we're going to come in April and we're going to go forward with it. And um, mm -hmm. but, I think that's a very good reason. Mm -hmm. This guy's not going to be able to go to business tomorrow if he doesn't get a sign approved. Okay. Well, we're not going to take any action, but I think that's our consensus, our plan for Monday night. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you for staying up so late. It's all great here. presentation. Yes, thank very you. good. Really. Just hit all the... Okay, we have a request from A1A Steel for a sign variance. 120 Bernard East St. Jean Drive. Um, the... Uh, but the oh, applicant reduce yeah. the size, so we don't need a sign variance, so we're actually okay. moving past that one. Well, well, right. Next is CVS Pharmacy. Oh, I'm wait, sorry, wait, wait. what did you just say with A1? Uh, the applicant has reduced the size of the A1 of the sign. No sign variance is needed. Oh, because I went up there, and you know, it's a tech park. Yep. So um, even if he, and, and the, the little sign he has out there now is about this big. Right. Okay. Well, the that building department's already issued the... Permit. So they've already issued it. Right. Great. So we don't have okay. to so do So that's, that's the one to the next one. No, okay. This is the CVS Pharmacy. Mm -hmm. And 419 right. East Town Highway. <laughs> Where have you been all night? I, hopefully somewhere else. I was sitting in the soft chair out here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Carol Bugby. I'm from Poyant Sign Company in New Bedford, Mass. And I'm here tonight uh, representing CVS Pharmacy and the, their new location at uh, 419 Route 28 East Falmouth. It's right on the corner of Route 28 and Davisville Road. 
Um, we're here tonight requesting a variance from the sign code which limits the square footage of each of the two uh, ground signs that they're allowed by right. Um, the primary ground sign on Route 28 is a total of uh, 43.44 square feet, while the monument sign on Davisville Road totals 18 square feet. The primary ground sign is only 3.44 square feet over the allowed code, and the monument sign is 2 square feet over the allowed code. CVS is the main tenant in the new plaza known as Davisville Square, along with six additional tenants. The sign size is slightly over code to accommodate the tenant panels, which are five inches in height, to afford the best visibility for the driving public. It will allow easy identification and time to slow down and enter the parking area safely. The second monument sign marks the entrance from Davisville Road and is important to drivers coming from that direction. Both signs will adequately identify the tenants in the square, and we ask for your approval for the small overage in size. It has been approved by the Design Review Board as well. And it is similar to if, if the, the, the sign, as you can see, is uh, similar to the one at the CVS that was just mm -hmm. opened at the corner mm -hmm. up here. Mm -hmm. I guess the only question I have is the dimensions you mentioned are a little different than we're getting in our recommendation from the Design Review Committee. I'm not sure they're significant enough that I really care, but they just um, want the exact same numbers. He, he had, uh, in, in the letter, he had 43.44 square feet. We have 43.33. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's what, in the, in, in the letter, it was 33? Three, three? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Um, We'll go with uh, 43.33. And uh, he did, in his letter, he didn't mention the monument sign, but it was on the application, and Ollie had instructed me that we needed to include that in our variance application tonight. What's a monument yes. sign? It's a, low, it's a low sign that's approximately, it can be, be approximately six feet off the ground. Yeah. There's a picture of it in the, in the uh, it's a small one that's going at the Davisville entrance, Davisville Road entrance. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Six foot high. Yeah. And it's internally illuminated. That's yes. It. Um, does the, the design review committee now allow internally illuminated? Yes, it's, al it's allowed by right. In, uh, unless you're in the historic district in downtown Falmouth. The, the town allows internally illuminated signage. And there's not a historic a district in Davisville right there? No. I thought they always saw I didn't think we had lights ago, on our signs either. They always had to be illuminated from the ground. Mm -hmm. oh. no. no. They allow internal illumination in Falmouth. Mm -hmm. Any questions, Mr. Patterson? No, I'm going to move that we concur with the Design Review Committee's uh, recommendation and approve this uh, sign of variance. Okay, and you also want to say approving the monument sign, because I think that's what the request is also asking for. And, and include the monument fine, uh, sign as well, excuse me. We have motion. I'll second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. The ayes have it. Thank you for your time. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Thanks for hanging around for so long. <laughs> Next item, we have the consolidated dispatch discussion and recommendations on uh, architectural design of tele telecommunications. We have addition or new costs for the two different projects, the two possibilities. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the, uh, actually, we've just we brought forth the architectural recommendations. Uh, the uh, telecommunications is still uh, some slight uh, completion going on with that, so I would hope to have that for the board uh, a week hence. Uh, but the, uh, the, the most critical uh, items being the two architectural, or the review by the arch outside architect on both the uh, fire station and the uh, police station sites, as you will note. Uh, due to some uh, procure procurement uh, adjustments and, and 
undertaking some internal work as is our uh, standard procedure on internal uh, renovations as opposed to brand new uh, standalone construction uh, has resulted in a reduction according to the uh, architect Castle Booth of about 20 percent from the uh, in for each uh, of the two options uh, from what was brought to the board initially uh, we're very pleased with that we've reviewed it internally we worked with our facilities manager our town engineer and others internally and we are uh, comfortable uh, with those estimates uh, they uh, do result in a variance of about $150,000 uh, on these estimates between the uh, police station proposal and the fire station proposal and uh, uh, we are bringing a uh, request to town meeting in November as the board is aware for uh, uh, funding to allow uh, the Consolidated Communications Center to move forward. I would ask the board if you're comfortable doing so to uh, uh, provide your determination about which of these sites you prefer uh, strictly on a uh, cost-saving basis. One jumps out. Um, there were other issues revealed in the earlier report that the board had, has already received regarding uh, the the practicality and usability of the two spaces there's some variability there in addition uh, all we're bringing you here is the adjustments in cost based on some uh, really some fine-tuning of the engineering and design working with Castle Booth as the outside architect and the, t the numbers for the technology that are going to be revised would be fairly consistent from one space to the other they wouldn't it was not a great deal of variation between those. Yeah, we have the technology dollars already set aside for consolidated package. That was already okay. voted by town meeting and is uh, and is available for use as soon as we get this decision made, and uh, which is obviously necessary to move forward. I do want to underscore the uh, <coughs> significant payback that would be available. Uh, you know, obviously the payback would be accelerated with these lower costs, uh, as would be fully anticipated. Not only uh, again. Harkening back to the matrix study, uh, which we talked about uh, a year ago, um, although the matrix study estimated a higher uh, annual cost savings, uh, I conservatively estimate $100,000 in savings and overtime costs uh, uh, that would translate to lower operating costs here. Those would be additional dollars that uh, this board, uh, finance committee, and town meeting would have every year uh, to allocate to. Uh, other priorities. In addition, uh, you of course uh, have what amounts to uh, three and a half additional police officers year-round available, an additional police officer on every shift, which totally changes the, uh, transforms the uh, representations made a number of years ago, going back to, as the board will recall, the Chief Riello estimating the additional manpower needed uh, what this would make available if we're able to move forward with consolidation is an additional police officer available to Chief Dunn on every shift, each of the three shifts every day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, as if you were to have hired three and a half additional police officers at the cost of about $400,000 a year, uh, which would not have to be allocated uh, because it's already within your budget and a consolidation would merely result in a reassignment of that existing manpower so that those police officers could be involved at the chief's discretion in neighborhood policing. Uh, and that is not the case now because those officers are tied up uh, at the desk uh, doing administrative work and uh, not able to perform those duties. Uh, that has been impact bargain already with the police union and we have the uh, agreement that that can go forward. So I bring that up because that is and should properly be uh, taken into account in your equation about uh, payback and benefit to the taxpayer. Beyond that, consolidating communications gives you a brand new paradigm in serving residents with communications that you do not now have, avoiding uh, two standalone communication centers and the kind of problems that we encountered uh, in the uh, past winter storm where we found, and we've already talked about this, calls bouncing back and forth between the police dispatch and fire dispatch, that would no longer occur because you'd have a single consolidated point of dispatch regardless of which of these two locations you selected. So uh, all of those things make sense. 
You'd also be creating a communication center for marine and environmental services and public works. And as we know, with the expanded uh, issues involving public works, water and wastewater, uh, needing an answering point for evenings and weekends is increasingly an imperative. And uh, it's, it's all about providing service to residents. You can do that at a much higher level with this concept, and you can also take advantage of the considerable annual cost savings that will be available uh, and the higher efficiency in terms of service to residents. Well, I'm certainly pleased to see these numbers as opposed to the ones we saw before. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, a little bit, I'm not sure I understand why we didn't see these numbers to begin with. I mean, I guess I would have expected them to have done this job and given us these seem more accurate numbers than the other ones were. Why well, the, were they so far Yeah, the, the reason for that, Mr. Chairman, is they just gave us a raw report okay. that did not involve, and understandably so, uh, the internal kinds of, they had no way of being <coughs> certain at that point about what we could take on internally okay. and, and what our facilities director, town engineer, and others involved in that okay. process uh, have done in the past and would bring to bear here. So we felt that you needed to have that raw report initially and for us to then do an internal evaluation and determine through procurement, also working with our finance director who oversees procurement at my request uh, to uh, verify what we could reasonably do under the uh, uh, rules and regulations of the Commonwealth. So that's given us the opportunity to analyze that further and bring this revised package from the outside architect to you. Because I know I had reacted very quite concerned about the total cost and mm -hmm. this cost is more I think much more reasonable so mm -hmm. um, the difference on these analyses between the uh, option to the found fire station and the preferred option the lower level of the found police station is um, it looks like the square footage is about 500 square feet difference um, you have the fire station at 1920 and then you have the police station at 1470. So the difference of 500 square feet translates in a total project cost to about $150,000 difference Correct. using rough numbers. So my question is, is there any reason to um, look at the additional cost of the fire station as getting us more value. For example, do we need an expansion possibility that extra space would require? Here's the, here's the dilemma, and again, it goes back to the, the report that was presented earlier, the shape of the mm -hmm. fire station mm -hmm. space compared to the police station. Mm -hmm. Police station is fundamentally a rectangle, right. and it's, yeah. it's, it's a rectangle that's very close to a square. Yep. So it is, can be very efficiently laid out. Frankly, much more akin to what we talked about a year ago in terms of the ability to lay space out efficiently. The fire station, by contrast, as the architect pointed out, uh, is long and narrow, uh, has a stairway tucked in, in in a significant position in it, which while there's space there, is not as fundamentally usable. And also, because it is long and narrow, there are traffic problems. In other words, the, the primary, as I recall from, again, not my analysis, but the architects, uh, the primary traffic pattern in that space because of its narrowness and length would have uh, individuals walking between the dispatch stations um, to conduct normal business as opposed to the dispatch being able to be compactly uh, brought together uh, in basically a functional cube. Um, again, it, it's, it's a byproduct of the layout, which is long and narrow and you have some patios uh, on the third floor of the fire station that are not part of uh, the, the police station design. So it's just a matter of Castle Blues taking a look at the existing space and saying this is what you need to, to lay it out functionally and this is what they feel is going to be uh, more space efficient and less space efficient. Uh, but some of that dialogue was in the earlier uh, the original report. And the question about sense. expansion is that it's going to be a two-person dispatch center unless we need it for either expansion or emergencies that it already has the expansion built into yeah, it. There are four right. stations. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. Right. That's, that yeah. answers my uh -huh. question. Uh -huh. Thank you. Pat? Well, my other question is um, 
the windows in the fire station, do they not pose a problem in terms of they have to be covered up or because of all the light? You couldn't have that kind of light if you have to look at monitors. And I recall Castle Booth said they had to be dealt with. As part of, but as they part didn't of the, say, they didn't include a cost of how they would do uh, that? I don't have I that don't in front of me. I'd have to take a look. I just think it's... I think that was in the renovation. I, I, I think it's probably somewhere, somewhere in that cost. square footage cost. Yeah. But they did, uh, as I recall, it was flagged, you're quite correct, that they felt the windows were uh, much beyond what would be appropriate for that kind of an activity. Tim? Yeah, I wanted to mention that uh, at the uh, MMA uh, selections meeting that I attended, uh, there were some comments by other selectmen from other municipalities about the detriments of relying on regionalization, because I suspect that somebody's going to come up and say, why don't we wait for the sheriff to provide this facility? Uh, but they basically were saying, we're running into the fact that we don't get the services that we think this community deserves because we're competing with other communities, and then all of a sudden we get hit with costs that we didn't anticipate because somehow or other the utility, you know, the cost of the, of the facility. So I think there's a lot to be said, given the more reasonable costs that we're looking here, uh, at justifying, um, uh, you know, having our own consolidated dispatch center and being able to make. Uh, more completely meet the needs of this community and control the costs as well. Service. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's more tailored service. And what I remember seeing in the timeline is we already, we do have the money set aside in our capital budget for this, which means that there is a chance we could be starting our new consolidated dispatch July 1, 2016. That's conceivable, yes. That would be the earliest we could cut over the beginning of the next fiscal year if town meeting at the Selectman select one of the sites and town meeting agrees to earmark the funds. Um, the telecommunications piece is already earmarked, so what we need is the physical space and that's what this request would be and it is one. It is within the proposed, uh, one of the proposed warrant articles at the November town meeting. And the regional only takes care of one of the issues too, is it? The regional doesn't take care of both police and fire. It only handles one of them. At this point, correct. That's, yeah, that the sheriff only that's provides correct. fire well, dispatch. I guess my question is, does that mean the sheriff still does the PSAP? We wouldn't be doing PSAP here, This is not involved with the PSAP. Not involved with the Correct. That, that is established by uh, an outside process. Whether things would change at another time, yeah. okay. I'm not projecting. But this is merely to take care of... ambulance, medical... Yeah, right. this is just creating a greatly enhanced cost effectiveness right. within our own internal operations. Rebecca? Um, when we make this vote, this is just for my personal information, when we make this vote, we take that to town meeting and there isn't another vote after we have ours concerning which location. Once we do this, that's the end of this discussion? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the decision on a physical space is controlled by the Board of Selectmen. It doesn't you go control then. The okay. So, so we're not asking will, for funding. Will, well, we are. I mean, okay. there's within our capital budget, request. There is a one article that we have that asks for money for the consolidated dispatch. And I think the article is even going to say at the police station or at the fire station. That would be part and of your recommendation. That would be our recommendation. But it's part of the budget. I mean, it's part of the... Uh, it's in our capital budget right now. Right now. And, you know, if we go with one of them, we may have to amend the capital budget from what's printed to cover the cost of it. I, mean, I can't remember what the number is that we put in, whether we put 550 or 600, and we would have to change that number to make sure that it covered whatever cost. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, have. I can tell you at this point, we have 700 in there, okay. Mark, because we, we have not yet finished this internal analysis and, and the additional input from the architect. So funds are sufficient to cover either one of these eventualities um, or to allow you to uh, request fewer dollars I don't know what you decide to do. So I'd like no, to recommend clear. we have a vote this evening. Well, I'd mm -hmm. like to recommend we do have a vote this evening. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Well, no, that's no, exactly what I'm saying. I'm not saying. clear again about how many. This mm -hmm. will be in the capital budget? It's, Correct. it's currently in the capital budget. But it's not requesting additional funds. It, one, of, it one of the Warren articles in the budget would set aside $700,000 to accomplish this space in the budget. In Renovation. The budget. Okay. It's, it's in the budget. It has to be voted on by town meeting. Okay. But it's subject to this board's determination okay. of mm -hmm. where you want to put this new department. And town meeting could zero the line item 
and then we would not be doing this. Right. Quick question. The, um, there was a lot of discussion about the cost of a generator, and I didn't, am I missing that? I, or do you remember? Both of these facilities have a generator. That will already suffice for this purpose? Correct. Okay, that answers. Thank you. Sam. Of course, I don't see contingency. Oh, the two owner's contingency is there's one in the top and on the bottom. Excuse me. <laughs> just I do. And I was wondering about the contingency on upon a contingency that we have 10% in the construction, <laughs> and then we have another contingency on the bottom that is a percentage of the total cost. Mm -hmm. So I think we're covered there. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're, okay. we're pretty comfortable with those costs. Ready? Ready. Um, I'm happy to be. Is this going to be a, 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 a? Is this a recommendation? No, or are we, we're actually moving to actually build the site. consolidated. We're mm -hmm. deciding where to put it. Yep. Oh, the site. site. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, then, yeah. Then I move that uh, we uh, that we put the consolidated this communi consolidated communications center at the police department on the lower level. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None the ayes have it. Along these lines, one of the things I do think I'd like to do at next Monday's meeting is to uh, assign different articles in the town meeting that each one of us is going to support or defend, and that we figure out who is going to take each one. Okay. I'll, I'm going to hosey this one. Yeah. And I want to take the That's lead yours. on. <laughs> this Definitely one. your art. <laughs> I'm in favor of that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> I like the word Mosey. I haven't yeah. heard that in a long time. No competition. All right, Article 6, our recommendation for this is this is one we just happened to slip by us. It is our request, uh, upon our request, to create a debt stabilization fund. Um, and I think our recommendation, because we did not cover it before, it has to be on town meeting yeah. floor that we're it making a recommendation. It's already there. We just need to recommend it. Right. Okay. Move Move mm -hmm. to recommend Article 6. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And the ayes have it, and we have the explanation as you can see in our packet. Individual selectments report. I have. Just, I'm giving up my time. Someone else will use it. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. only going to do a piece. Of it. Excuse me? Yeah, nice. uh, uh, all right, are we doing? Uh, well, I, I just wanted to mention that. I actually went to a, a second uh, meeting, and it was a uh, new, new new changes in municipal, in municipal law uh, seminar. It lasted uh, for oh, about six hours, and it was put on by the Department of Local Services. Uh, and the two areas that they actually covered that I went to sessions on were collective bargaining, and I distributed some information. The second one had to do with uh, assessing property uh, and to, to make sure that the town is covered. And in particularly, it applies to uh, use of solar panels. Um, and so, uh, I've already mentioned this a couple, to a couple people, but I, you know, just some thoughts that I can alert people to that. But that, that's it. I'm not going Well, I just want to say I went to the homelessness meeting a week ago Monday at the Wakoi Church. Um, no, was there? You know the pastor, but um, uh, Alan Burt, who's been a long, long um, person, who's been advocate for the homeless for as many years as I can remember, many years asking the county for money. But anyway, it was a really good meeting. There were a lot of people there, and all of our town staff were there that deal with housing and homeless. It was really great to see them there, as well as the um, Falmouth Housing Corporation, Linda Clark, and others. And the next meeting is next Monday night at 6 p.m. at the Wakoi Church. I know we're meeting Monday night, aren't we? Yes. But at least we can go from 6 to, to 7. And I, I think you know the domestic violence vigil was some the other night. And um, um, I don't know what to say. Something about the moorings issue that, um, that Joan Addo sent some emails around. We've been struggling with this for a long time, and we have the fee hearing coming up. And I was going to talk to Julian and maybe get some more information out about these issues of moorings because it's really, it's getting to the point where it's really beginning to be unfair. And Danny Sheriff spoke about it. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. So we really do need to look at that. 
I do want to remind people that tomorrow night at the planning board at 630, we'll be meeting to make a recommendation on our, uh, the article we put forward, Article 3 from the special town meeting. Is it 6 or 6.30? Yes, 6.30. 6.30. 6.30 right here. Yeah, correct. Okay. 6.30. Too bad I didn't bring my sleeping report? bag. I'll just Thank stay you. right Thank here. I <laughs> uh, just want one additional note. I uh, wanted to uh, confirm with the board that this past Thursday I was pleased to join uh, Heather Harper and Denise Coleman in attending the monthly meeting of the Recreation Committee. Uh, specifically, we requested the committee's thoughts and recommendation on a proposal to utilize currently vacant and essentially uh, unused space in the rear of the Gus Canyon Community Center, just off the rarely used teen center space. Ultimately subject to Board of Selectmen approval, of course, uh, this unused space would become uh, the location of the much needed town archives. And uh, we had something we've been scoping out and um, members of the committee uh, are taking that under advisement. They made a couple other suggestions which we're taking a look at in that uh, same building, but obviously we prefer to uh, suggest that a space be utilized that is currently vacant and unused. And uh, just wanted the board to know that we are pursuing that. A Thank quick you. question: do, do we use Iron Mountain at all for archives? That you know, I don't. I, I don't know that we use them actively now. I know I'm familiar with them, but I'll have to double check that. Well, I, I just, I just want to express my concern about using you know viable town space like that for storing things because once you do it it's like you've lost it forever i i mean in my experience i've seen it happen i just think we should be very very careful yeah, right. about using active space that we need for the community to store things when who knows a year down the road we might find we need that space so yeah. you might want to look right. into iron mountain well the concern about iron mountain is it's relative yeah, but accessibility they, in, in, in uh, over a short time period, if you need like a 24 hour staff. turnaround, uh, yeah, I know, um, but it's the far, records. it's the old, old, old stuff. Yeah, I have no problem with Iron Mountain for that very antiquated, yeah, uh, but we're talking about files that are more in the five to ten year time frame that don't need to be stored in this building that but is prime, prime space, and they can't, they, they're not digitized. Well, the, the process that we're well, we proposing okay. is to archive files and as they're used we would digitize them yeah. but uh, we need to put them somewhere yeah, they're yeah. at the lion's share of them are right underneath where we're sitting <laughs> and taking up prime office space for yeah. no good no good reason and really very poorly organized so in order to move ahead with a town hall renovation project we need to be a sort of a set of dominoes and one of the budget dominoes again in town meeting is we're asking for dollars to begin that archive process purchase the equipment to put in an existing space rather than go out and acquire additional space uh, that's been unused. In the case of this space, it's been unused for other than maybe once or twice a year, I'm told, for uh, years and years and years. Yep. And, uh, you know, I guess the issue becomes do we continue to heat and light, uh, you know, and incur energy costs for space that remains vacant while we go out and spend and or build additional costs that are just going to add to the burden of the taxpayer. That's a struggle we're in the midst it. of. And, and while we're trying to do what we are in town hall, sorry to be so long winded. Well, we don't have a, a, a TV company that has finally decided to move out of their building and leave it to the town. Oh, that's an idea. Well, that's right. a great place to yep. store archives. And, and there's a good thing of being at that level, it's up out of the flood flow as well. It is indeed, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Which our records are subject to flooding. And oh, if there weren't other question. spaces in the rec center that also weren't heavily used. I mean, there are other spaces that aren't used either that much. So, as we know. Uh, motion to adjourn. Yes. That's all I have. I apologize. Okay. That concludes my report. Second. Motion to adjourn, yes. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 Aye.